Good morning. Hope you had a good night last night and um, wanted to come on here this morning and talk to you about your faith. Um, I was listening to a message this morning by Darius Daniels and it's um, it was about the book. Okay. But they never got into the message about the book and the book is the Bible. Um, instead, they started talking about faith. They started talking about the Holy Spirit and in that message, I took some notes and some things jumped out at me that uh, I wanted to share with you. And this message title is going to be, You're Too Far. Um, you're Too Far. So they started talking about um, Jesus healing the woman with blood. And, you know, she touched the hem of his garment. Um, and he said, by your faith. Um, you are made whole by your faith you are made whole um, and they they talked about how um, it was proximity with her that she had the faith back you know she had the faith to make her come to even try to reach out and touch Jesus okay so what they they did was analyze the fact that you know, she wasn't made whole back home just because she believed, but that she came to Jesus and she touched him. So her proximity of how close she was to Jesus, by her faith, she was healed. And so they gave an analogy about how, and I can't remember the other guy that was talking with him, um, but it happens every Wednesday night. Um, you know, he does messages with this guy. And it talks about how the closeness, the closeness that we have with the Lord is when Jesus becomes uh, Holy Spirit is uh, exercised in your life. Um, you know, you're utilizing, you're tapping into the power of the Holy Spirit the closer that you get to Jesus. And so the message title, You're Too Far, is like, I know growing up, I used to read the Bible. You know, I, I, I heard, you know, the Holy Spirit's gonna, you know, God, three persons in one, um, and the Trinity and all that, but I never really fully understand the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, you know, that he needed to ascend to the Father, so and what we will do in the Spirit will be greater. Um, but you know, how do you get that Spirit? That never, you know, in in the Spirit already resides in us. But if we're tapping into it, His power is another thing. And so this message kind of talked about that too. I mean, it was all over the place. So there really isn't like, you know, I finally ended it just so I could give my message because it was, it's jumping on another subject. So they were kind of like uh, covering lots of things. And so your faith and how you exercise it, um, how, how, how much you believe and how much you obey and how much it's, it's not works. Okay. And he talked about how some people who have been in the church um, their whole lives, uh, that the Holy Spirit isn't as evident in their life as maybe, uh, another person who isn't as righteous, who isn't as, as, you know, doctrinally theology sound, um, who can quote the scriptures and, and can do all that, um, you know, know it like the back of their hand, but that their faith is that they've tapped into the Holy Spirit. And when, when you are walking in the Spirit, God's wisdom, I mean, that's your companion, that's your partner, that's your, I mean, He's going to give you wisdom and knowledge and answers and things that you don't have on your own. And like you never are alone you always feel his presence there um and you just reach out to him and talk to him and like 
it's this partnership it's this companionship and um it's really too cool but you know he also talked about faith and how god okay if faith were a container and we bring our container to jesus how much faith we have if it's like a container some of us only have a cup of faith but some of us have a bucket and then some of us have a pool or a gallon and so he gives according to our faith and so oh ye of little faith you know if you're not believing and you're not claiming and you're not um you know, uh, getting revelations and, and saying, yeah, I, I claim that, um, then, you know, your faith is, is small, but God says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, um, and you know, but the more faith you have, the more, I want to say the more tapped into the power that you receive, like faith is like a muscle. You have to work it out you you know and and some people have weighted faith and and like i can reflect and say god i i he he told me to you know i, I feel that he led me here i acted upon what i felt he was leading me to out of blind faith didn't make sense didn't whoa was such a tall wall but i did it I did it acting out in faith. And when I did that, the, the abundance, the, um, the joy, the, um, can't pinpoint what I want to say, the measures of his, I have seen the goodness of God. Okay. Stepping out in blind faith, acting in obedience not knowing, you know, uncertainty, but acting anyway, and then watching God work. That gives you weighted faith. That gives you a trust like nothing other. And so when I receive the word, and, you know, you have to discern it, um, that to do something or to act on something or whatever... I really, sometimes it don't make sense and, and I do it. Um, and, and God will never tell you to do something that goes against his word. Um, so, you know, if you say, oh, God told me to do this, but you know, in the Bible, it, it tells you not to do that. Then that is the wrong voice. Um, because God will never contradict his, his self. And so you have to discern it. Um, you also, you don't have the whole vision in your head, okay? You have to just walk it out step by step, moment by moment. Like you might say, do this or go there or call them or write this um, or, I don't know, visit or buy this, give it to them or, you know, so he's going to... To give you instruction and it's up to you by faith whether or not you walk that out you may never know what that may be if you don't exercise it and take the steps to walk it out and so that's how your faith increases the more you listen the more you tap into the closer you get to God the more you study the more you know, he will reveal himself to you. He will become intimate with you. Um, I get so excited uh, for my morning talks with him. My morning uh, word, like learning about him. So, you know, there will become a thirst for the word. A thirst for the relationship, actually. Like, you know, when you're in relationship with someone in the newness of dating they call it the honeymoon phase uh where you're you know you're going on dates you're buying flowers you're um you're getting all prettied up and you just can't wait 
just can't wait to, to see that person, to um, hug them, to kiss them, to, to just bask in their presence, okay? Um, that is how it's supposed to be with God is and, and he can't wait to to visit and to see you too um you know he calls us his children and I, I can only relate this to my own children when they were little how when they stayed at my mom's and uh, I would go pick them up and they would come running and and just hugging me and I missed you mommy and you know, that joy and that excitement on their face and not just on their face, but on, on, you know, I had missed them greatly and couldn't wait to go pick them up. And there were times that, um, I, it was hard to leave. It was hard to leave them, um, with, with mom, but I had trust that my mother was going to take care of my children uh, because she was a great mom to me and my brother and she was very protective and and very um I, I was she's kind of overprotective but my mom I knew there was no problem that my mom wouldn't be conscientious to okay so I had trust in my mom that she was going to take care of my children okay we have to have trust that God is our father and he is going to take care of his children. He's going to take care of us. We have to believe that. We have to trust that. And the more time we spend in his presence and get to know him, the closer and more intimate, you know, I, I, I wouldn't just leave anybody with my kids. Um, and, and rest, let's just say, you know, in his presence, rest, there is rest, um, because we have faith and trust. So I had faith and trust in my mother. I can't say I had faith and trust in other people to be able to leave my kids. So guys, it's, oh, sorry. It, okay. So everyone, um, so brothers and sisters in Christ here, um, it is how close you are to somebody, whether or not you trust them. It also, whether or not you listen to them, whether or not you value and respect them. Um, you know, you've got to know their heart. You've got to know their intentions. You've got to know um, whether or not they're real and they're honest and, um, you got to know how they feel about you. Um, there has to be safety. So all of these things you can only come to know about God is by getting closer to him. That's getting in the word. That is praying. That is talking. That is worshiping, uh, praising. And you have to go into his presence. You have to go into his presence. You have to spend time with him. Okay. It, this is so simple. So simple. And it's almost like a hidden secret in, in the church. I don't know. At least the churches I went to. It's like there were never really any sermons on the power of the Holy Spirit. Like how to get it. What it means. It, it was just kind of like you had to understand you you were expected to know um, it wasn't a breakdown of this is what this is and that's where education is powerful and so I want you to reflect today so let's make an at life application because that's what it's all about is you can study 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 and if you never make life application, your life isn't going to grow. It's not going to change. Keep doing the same things, going to get the same things. So how can you apply this message to your life? Okay. So you can reflect and say, 
Is God my friend? First of all, is he my friend? You know, he's your Lord. He's your friend. He's your savior. He's your companion. He's your father. He's all kinds of things. Okay. But you got to start somewhere. You know, he is your savior if you're saved. Okay. So number one, he, you do have him in that place. Okay. So you trusted, you believed. Okay. Now, is he going to be your Lord? His Lord is when you surrender your life and your will to live for him. His will is becomes your will. And that doesn't always come in the beginning. That takes time, okay? Because you have to grow your faith. You have to grow your trust. And, you know, as you walk out your relationship with him, these different levels will come to you, okay? So, I think he's your savior. So, let's start with him trying to be your friend. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord right now, all he is is your savior. He's this person in heaven that's just hovering over you. Okay. No, he's more than that. He's real. Okay. And you might need to start with, how did I become friends with my best friend? What did I do? with my best friend that I need to do with God. And guys, oh, sorry. Uh, just because he's not a person sitting there beside you doesn't mean his spirit, you can't feel his presence, okay? You have to just um, I don't know, if, if you have to sit something there to make you feel like you're talking to somebody, um, but his presence is just there. And just start talking. Hey, God. You know, someone said in my meeting, divorce care. They're like, I don't know how to pray. Prayer is so simple. It's just conversation. It's conversation with our God. Um, there is no special prayer. Um, there is no... He doesn't want all these words to just impress. He's, he doesn't need you to impress him. He needs you to be real with him. So, it's conversation. And it's it's real conversation. Good, bad, ugly. I have had some really ugly conversations with, with God. In in desperation. In uh, anger. In, in all kinds of emotions. He knows it. He's got it. He understands it. And he wants you to be authentic and transparent. That is how your relationship grows. Be real. Just talk to him. And start today. If you don't have that close walk, you can get it. He says, seek, seek knock, and you shall find me. And and he's, he's waiting. And I keep telling you that. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. So don't, don't keep him waiting. Do yourself the best favor that you could give yourself the best gift that you can ever receive in your entire life. And that is a close and intimate fellowship walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the best. And um, it's available to you. If you're a believer, it's there. It's there. You just have to tap into it. And these are some of the measures that you can take to do that. Okay. You can always reach out to me. Thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate all of you who follow and comment. Um, and have a wonderful day. Thanks.